Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folani. Well, uh, without further ado, our guest this morning is Senator Shehu Sani. Senator Shehu Sani is an author, he's a human rights activist, uh, a commentator on public affairs, a former senator of uh, Kaduna Central Senatorial uh, District. Um, he's our guest this morning, and um, we sort of um, we've decided that we're going to pick his mind yeah, because he's very, very current. He's on he's on Twitter. I'll come to that. He's a man who can be serious, and he's also a man who can be light if that is what is required. I remember a recent tweet of his to I think a, a, a political associate, a friend of his, saying that um, uh, you haven't tweeted in a while. Are there any difficulties with data? Should I send you some? That was hilarious. Um, a fine morning to you, Senator Shehusani. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, now, um, there are a number of, there's so much going on, so we're going to sort of select them and sort of uh, see uh, what you feel about some of these ideas. And so I wanted to start off, if I may, with um, your impressions on the zonal formula um, for positions in, uh, for principal positions in the uh, National Assembly. As you know, there are all sorts of speculations out there. Uh, give me your thoughts on the whole idea um, in order to comply with uh, equity and fairness. Um, thank you for having me once again in your program. Well, from my own experience in the National Assembly and also in the political scene in the country, uh, each time you have a new government, there will always be uh, a restructuring of political offices that will ensure full representation and participation of all the geopolitical zones in the country. As we have it now in the country, uh, from May 29, uh, 2023, we are going to have a president from the southwestern part of Nigeria and a vice president from the northeastern part of Nigeria. So it is logical and rational that the positions in the National Assembly should be used to balance the deficit or the inadequacy or the issues that have arisen uh, during the elections. And that is the position of the Senate President should ideally go to either the southeastern part of Nigeria or the south-south. Uh, and then the speakership can go perhaps to North Central or other parts of the country. Uh, there is no doubt about it, the hierarchy and organogram of government is very clear. If you are going to have the full participation of all the geopolitical zones as structured in Nigerian state, uh, there is no doubt about it, we must use the issue of the zones and also take cognizance of other arisen religious or uh, ethnic issues that may arise. arise. Uh, particularly the southeastern part of Nigeria that have always been crying of marginalization. And it is also a fact that is on the ground. Uh, we can't uh, come out with a governmental structure with that part of the country being excluded. So I I believe that National Assembly will first of all take cognizance of that and have the speakership and the Senate presidency zone and all other positions like the deputy Senate president, majority leader, minority, minority leader of the House and the Senate will all be spread to ensure full representation of all other zones. But most importantly, uh, the president or the executive uh, usually take interest in what happens at the National Assembly. If you remember what happened in 2015, the president was in support of Amin Lawan, but uh, typical of uh, the lackadaisical behavior, uh, there wasn't so much uh, thrust and uh, intervention to ensure that happened. And as such, when it was left bare, uh, Saraki uh, emerged the president of the Senate. So it's also dependent on what happened. Uh, when the senators come and sit down, 
Uh, if there is interest from the side of the executive of where they want the, pre the Senate presidency and the speakership to be zoned to, uh, the majority party, which is the APC, would take cognizance of that. And then they also have to ensure they have a united house because if there are so many candidates that come out from the ruling party in both the House and the, and the, and the Senate, uh, the minority party, the majority of them, which is the PDP, can take, uh, can exploit the situation and come out with one candidate that can get block votes of other parties and then emerge. And that uh, is going to be a repeat of what happened in 2015. So okay. who will become the Senate this? president and who will become the speaker? Yes. Exactly. Okay. In fact, I was going to ask you, you know, coming from what, what you said, uh, some of you, you mentioned um, Saraki there, um, I'd ask you to sort of compare the uh, Saraki-led Senate and the uh, Lawan-led Senate, uh, in your opinion, both of them being your former colleagues. Um, it, it looks like it didn't get across. My, my question didn't get across. I, I was asking if you would uh, compare, for example, from your point of view, the uh, Saraki-led Senate and the uh, Lawan-led Senate. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Well, the character the behavior and the pattern of every national assembly is dependent on the leadership of that national assembly and that leadership is dependent on how they emerged. Saraki emerged a president of the Senate as a rebel, uh, one that was not in the good books of the president. As such, uh, because of that, uh, the whole four years was one of holding the government account and also we had for ourselves an image of being belligerent or combative. And the Senate, the Lawrence Senate, also has its root in the fact that he was a favorite of Mr. President and that uh, they never hide their uh, character of ones that are ready to do all the biddings of the president and as they earn for themselves the label of being a rubber stamp. So mm -hmm. the Saraki Senate and the Lawrence Senate are opposite of each other. In our own case, when we're there, yeah. despite us coming from the ruling party, but the way Saraki emerged is, is in such a way that it's like a hostile takeover. And throughout the uh, four years, there wasn't love lost between the government and uh, the uh, parliament. Uh, but in the case of Lawan, Lawan became the Senate president with the blessing of the president. And he cannot afford to do anything contrary for the fact that that became the reason why almost the federal government, the executive arm, almost gets everything passed. Whatever they take, it has been passed. Whoever is nominated, he has been passed except a very few cases. Uh, so this is the difference. When you have a, a Senate of our own, the positive side of it is that we will hold government to account, mm -hmm. we will perform our oversight function, and we will defend the sanctity, we defend the sanctity and independence of the National Assembly. But the negative side of it is that many of our bills end up not being passed and many things were stopped because of the frosty relationship that existed between us and the executive. And then for the Lawan Senate, the negative side of it is that they end up approving everything, loans, appointment, even people who are not capable, and everything gets through. <laughs> and as such, they couldn't even and the respect of political appointees. Sometimes they would invite them, they would not come. And when they come, they become so arrogant. And as such, that independence, that sanctity of the National Assemblies uh, 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 as an independent armed government was compromised. 
But the positive side of them is that they almost got all their bills being passed. That is uh, the petroleum industry bills and so many other bills which we couldn't get passed because of our relationship. So these are the positives and negative sides of the two National Assembly if at least I'm able to... Um, okay, so following here. from that, Senator, uh, what kind of um, uh, National Assembly, especially Senate, uh, but really National Assembly, uh, do we then require the executive branch is one thing, the legislative branch is another. They don't necessarily need to be at odds with each other. Um, uh, but, but still, give me your thoughts on the ideal kind of uh, National Assembly uh, that Nigeria requires at this point in time. Well, uh, in the history of Nigeria, uh, this is the first time, maybe from 1979 or 1999, that we are going to have a president who also has experience of the National Assembly being a senator. And that experience will help him in knowing uh, the challenges that he is likely going to face if the issue is mishandled. I can remember vividly in the build-up to 2015 National Assembly elections, we were there with uh, Aswaju and other elected senators when the issue of who is going to emerge, the president of the Senate is concerned. And uh, he tried to uh, intervene, but because he wasn't in charge and the other side were not so firm and strong. And then the goal was called against the president. But this time around, I believe his experience will help him. And he knows that he can't implement any policy and program if he doesn't have a national assembly that is in sync with him. But the kind of national assembly that is needed in the 10th Senate will be the, a hybrid of the 8 and 9. One that is able to defend the sanctity of the national assembly and maintain its integrity as independent armed government, and at the same time, with the executive to see that their bills are scaled through. If they shift to our side, then there is going to be a combat for four years. If they shift to the side of Lawan, they are simply going to be another rubber stamp for the next four years. So they need to, we need to have, especially with the kind of challenges we have in the country today that is more grievous than the one that was during our own time, uh, the need for them to work together because working together should not be about the parliament being subservient or being enslaved by the executive arm of the government. So, but we will know all these things only when those that have won election have taken their seats and then we know the character of the current National Assembly. But it starts with who becomes the Senate President, who becomes the Speaker. The character of the Senate President and the Speaker will determine the kind of people that will be elected in the sub-positions. If, mm. if you can recall from 1999, uh, during Obasanjo's time, there have always been problems uh, with Ewerem, with uh, Wabara, with Okadibo, with Ayum, and uh, uh, Innamani. So many. So if you don't get the leadership of the National Assembly right. Then the crisis begins uh, from there. And I think, uh, he, I believe that he's experienced enough, enough to know that um, if he doesn't have the kind of people that are in sync with his own ideas of what government is, I, I think uh, the problem will certainly begin from that point. Mm. All right then, thank you, uh, Senator. You know, as I said, our, our main objective today is to uh, 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 pick your mind on uh, far-ranging subjects. Uh, and um, so um, let me ask you, um, of recent, the uh, former Emir of Kano, uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, now uh, known as, uh, now addressed as Khalifa Sanusi II, um, he had said that he pities um, uh, the incoming president. Um, you know, and uh, I, I wondered... Um, well, uh, this was a question I could ask you. When he says he pities the next president, 
uh, and I don't think the president had actually, the president-elect had emerged then. Uh, what, what would be your guess as to uh, the thoughts going on in his mind when he said he actually pities the next president? Is that a pointer to the um, multiplicity of problems? Because um, if you like, you could look at it at the same time, but I was going to ask you following this, what are the four main areas that you would select the incoming government should focus on? Well, before I, 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 I make points on where he should focus on, I have to also buttress the point of the former avia by emphasizing on what the next president, which of course is Aswaju, that is going to face. The first problem he's going to face is a divided nation, a nation divided and hostile along religious and ethnic lines which, of course, he has a duty to ensure unity and stability. The second, he's going to uh, inherit uh, a, a serious, uh, badly managed economy uh, with high debt and uh, other issues that are associated with it. And then he's going to inherit about 133 million people that have been officially declared, declared as uh, living below the poverty line. And he's going to inherit the problem of insecurity, which has not been solved in the last eight years. And he is going to inherit uh, the need to continue to reform our electoral system, the point that the problems that we face today are addressed. Now, having said that, yeah. what should be his focus as a president? I think the first should be security. Uh, terrorist attack in the northwest and northeastern part of Nigeria is continuing. They, they keep on slaughtering people, taking hostages, and that has become the identity of our country uh, today. The next he is going to address is the economy of the country. How, what should he, he do about all the subsidy? Uh, for now, the federal government is finding it even difficult to pay salary. Will he be able to maintain the staff spent of the federal government and other issues? Will he cut the court of governors? Yes, he has to. And then uh, a mountain debt. Uh, our debt, uh, both uh, foreign and local now, is over $100 billion. Uh, so what will he do to address it? And the fact that statistically we have what will remain out of it, uh, he is going to inherit a burden of oil subsidy for over 30 years. Government after government have, been, have tried to remove oil subsidy. But the consequences of protest and the social uprising that was being feared became the reason why government uh, after government that became impossible to achieve. But I have heard it. He was being very blunt during his campaign that he is ready to dare uh, the lion. Well, we will live to see that, but I believe that he has to implement pushing programs and policies that will ensure that take place. Another thing which the Senate President should focus on is agriculture. We have seen all these uh, interventions by MFLA has not produced anything. Closing the borders the Anko Borrowers program, the so-called right pyramid which we have seen, have not stopped people from importing food and has not bring down the prices of food. So that is a very wrong agricultural policy. We need to have a minister of agriculture who knows things about agriculture and not have a central bank that is almost involved in everything from bridge construction to health to energy. They have to be limited to what they should do on monetary policy. And I think the last thing we should focus on, or one of the most important things, is education. Okay. Uh, ASU has been on strike for so many years. Our education system is bad, and it has been neglected over the years. So the next president should make that a priority. And I think the danger of it is if you make so many things your priority, you will not be able to achieve them. <laughs> but at least there should be targets of what you want to achieve in four years, and they work hard to achieve. Okay. Uh, and, and I suppose all of this, you know, um, what uh, 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 Khalifa Sanusi II 
in saying that um, he actually pitied whoever was coming along to confront all of these issues. Okay, uh, I, I think it must have frozen again. Uh, uh, what, maybe I should just go on a break, and when we come back, we'll also include your call. Stay with us, please. <laughs> 